So we're here with a video for um, objective number nine. If you're watching these newly, um, when they first come out, you, you'll see I skip eight for now. That one's a little more difficult objective, but I will go back to that. Um, so we're going to look at objective nine right now. Let's answer a question about a check or a deposit slip. Um, so these are maybe things that we don't use all the time right now in today's time, but um, they are still used sometimes, so it's, uh, I think, important to know um, how to use them. Um, I'll do the best I can to show you how to use a check on here, otherwise I'll post another a YouTube video. There's got to be some good YouTube videos out there on how to write a check, but um, what this um, book uses or talks a little bit more about the check is the parts of the check. Um, doesn't go into how to write a check super well, but... Um, I'll, I'll go over that in the video as well, just to kind of give a background on how to write a check. But let's take a look at these questions, and um, um, I think we have six problems to go over, and we'll look at the parts of the check and deposit slip. So number one um, says, what is the account number shown on a check? So I'll just kind of go over all the parts of the check here. Um, whoever owns a checking account, their name and address um, will be up here. Um, this is the check number right here, okay, just to identify what number of check it is from the checkbook. Your date goes here, um, so if I was writing a check today um, that I'm making this would be 624, and again, sorry for the writing on here. Um, you could either write just 20 or they're saying for this year so that they can't counterfeit them as 2000 and something else, right, 2020, okay? Um, pay to the order of, now this doesn't have to do with this question, but I'm just showing you the parts of the check and how you'd write a check. Um, pay to the order of, um, if we were going to write check, let's say for our cell phone, um, Verizon, okay? The amount would be over here. Let's say it's $134 or something. Let's say $134.50. Some people write the 50 cents normal size. Some people write it small and underlined it. Or some people just write it a little bit small just so it distinguishes that that's after the decimal. Um, there's no real right way to do it, but um, $134.50. And then this line, um, you need to write it out the amount in words. That's kind of a way to make sure there's just not a mistake in the, the amount. Again, I'll see if I can fit this in here when I'm writing with this mouse. Um, but I would say one hundred. Again, very sorry, but I wish I had a better tool. This isn't going too bad. Now, when we talk, sometimes we might say $134, but actually, it's 100. You don't use an N there in the actual technical way of saying it. You'd say $130. And then a dash. Okay, sorry for the writing there, but 34, and then whenever there's a decimal, that's where you'd use the word end. And then you write your cents as a fraction out of 100, so it would be 50 over 100. Okay. So 134 and 50 one hundred dollars. Um, the four or some checks say memo here. Um, that's for what this check is for. So um, you, if I, you know, could write phone bill or if you're writing it to a a friend that borrowed you money, you could write that in there. A lot of times businesses want you to write your account number in there, or a lot of times in the case of 
cell phone company or something, you might have to write your phone number there. So when the, whatever the directions are, you'd write that in there. Um, and then here, you'd sign your name. Okay, your signature goes there. These parts on the bottom, which actually now finally gets to the question here, is there's three groups of numbers down here. This first group, and they're separated by these two little dots in between, is the routing number, it means each bank is assigned um, a certain number. So um, if this was a check I was writing, this number would be assigned to my bank. Um, the second group of numbers is the account number. So that means this check goes to this bank, and this is for me, the account number for each individual account in a bank. So this would be my account number. And then this number is the same as up here. It's the check number. Okay, so for this problem, the, after all this explanation, the question actually was, what is the account number shown on the check? That would be this middle group of numbers, so letter A. Okay. Number two, deposit slip. Um, a lot of times now you can um, deposit checks right on your phone. Um, but this is, if you're going to the bank and let's say you have um, cash and checks and things like that, and you need to turn in things, um, this would be a deposit slip you'd fill out. Um, again, I can post a video of, a better video of actually how to do this, um, but this will cover how to do um, the problems that they ask for on here. So the way you use a deposit slip is whatever money you're putting into the bank, um, you would you would use a deposit slip. So you write the date here. So just like I did up top. Now for this problem, you don't actually have to do this because it's just asking a question. So I got it sloppy. Here, if you're going to want cash back, um, you need to sign this. You're just putting the money into the account, and then you don't need to. Um, then there's some spots over here to fill in. Um, this first one, it says cash. That is, if you are turning an actual paper and coin money, you would put that amount up here. So if you had like $120.25 that you were going to put in the bank, you would put that amount up there. These next two spots are for checks. So someone's paying you for something, $161.50 and $76.30. You write those check numbers here, which if someone's paying you a check, you look up in the corner on the check. Um, those amounts go here. This third one, you can either have a third check, or if you have more than three checks on the back side of this deposit slip, there's a whole bunch of spaces. And let's say you have like 10 checks um, that you want to deposit. What you would do is you wouldn't necessarily have to put these here. You would use the back side, list all your checks, add them up. And then it's hard to read on here, but you would it says total from other side. So you could um, put them all on the back side of this and then write that total in this blank. Okay. This case, we only have two checks for these amounts. So subtotal, you're adding up all these rows up here. So if you have cash and a few checks or cash and a total from the other side, you'd add those up. In this case, the two checks add up to 237.80, okay? This spot, you may or may not fill in. It says less cash received, meaning you're gonna subtract any cash you actually want in your hand to take out of the bank. So in this case, you'd be going to the bank with $237.80 in checks, but you want to leave with $97 in your hand, okay? So the reason they subtract those is they'll give you the $97, and that leaves $140.80 to go into the bank. So this bottom amount tells you how much is going into the bank. So this question um, said that he had partially filled out the deposit slip shown below, how much is he depositing in all? So he's bringing $237.80 to the bank in checks, 
but the amount to be deposited is this 140.80, okay? Because he's going to walk away with $97, okay? So that's the long part of here that's explaining. The next couple problems will go faster because it's just doing these things. Um, actually, it's just one more problem. Um, so all the checks problems are going to go with this information. All you know, they'll either ask about where is the person you're paying, where, what spot does that go in, and they'll have multiple choice listing up here, but that's going to deal with all those spots. Your deposits of questions will either be like this, or it'll be like number three here. So the difference with this one is it says that she is depositing two checks into her checking account. So those are right here. She has partially filled out the deposits up shown below. How much is she getting back in cash? So this part I wrote in. So the problem gave us, gave us this, and they, it said that um, she's going to leave $298 in the bank. So this is a little bit of a weird problem, um, meaning I guess this case would be I'm bringing some money in, and I know I want to put $298 into the bank. Okay, so then it's basically saying, so how much do I get to walk away with? How much do you get back in cash? So what you do is, you get your two checks. First thing you do is add them to find out what your subtotal is. So that's right here. So you're bringing $430 to the bank. You want to leave 298 of it there. So you want to figure out how much you get to walk away with. So there's a couple of different ways you can think about it. Um, in this actual math problem, it would be 430. You're going to subtract the cash and leave you with $298. That would be this equation here. Okay. Now, maybe you think of it in that way, or maybe you just look at this and say, well, if I have this and I need this, how much more is this than this? And then you just subtract. Or if you're a math-minded person, you would set up the equation like this. Um, you would move your question mark over this side by adding the question mark. And then you subtract the 298. And either way you do it, you would leave with $132. Now, if you, wanted, if you didn't know if that was right, put that in here and see if it makes sense. If you put 132 in here, Okay, and I'll do the math problem. 430 minus 132, yes, that equals 298. So the answer is 132. Okay, so that is um, objective 9. You go to your workbook, um, page through. Here's objective 9. So it looks like we've got six problems and then the answers. Go over those. Um, uh, if you have if you're not getting the correct answers, let me know, ask a question, we'll figure it out. Okay.